you are uh, because you know, you know, what you don't want to have happen is actually what happened to Ukraine over the last 20 years, which is that you change some things, but not everything. So you, you leave open loopholes in the society. So you have whatever free prices, but there are still these state companies which live off subsidies, but they have private people in charge of them. And so in effect, you have private people taking money from the state, um, a lot of which goes into their pockets. You know, when you have a system which is halfway um, in which um, you allow a, a sort of class of, you know, parasitical people who live off the state to, um, you know, to somehow earn money off the system. This is when you, this is when you get stuck. Um, and what you need, you know, is a, you know, in certain terms of economic reform is a system which is, you know, as much of a free playing field as possible in which as few um, corrupting regulations as possible. You need people to be able to found their own businesses. You need people to be able to behave freely. You need a, a completely predictable and apolitical tax system, um, which is very simple. I mean, simplifying regulations, simplifying the tax system, uh, making it easy for people to be small business and making it people for easy to operate in the economy. These are really um, these are really the key things. And doing that really as fast as possible is important because the it's actually in the time you you waste um, doing the reform slowly that you, you, you can become corrupt. Um, this is what, if you look at Eastern Europe um, in the 1990s, actually it was the countries that made the biggest changes, the fastest, that were ultimately the most successful. And that's, you know, the, this expression shock therapy sounds terrible, you know, because shock therapy means the patient dies, right? But actually, um, you know, making as many changes as you can quickly Makes it make simply seems to make it easy, make it uh, make the result uh, better. I mean, you know, it's an interesting comparison, even of Poland and Hungary, which are two countries which you know, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, are relatively successful. They both made some kind of transition to capitalism, and you know, the Hungarians complain a lot, but I mean, it's not a it's not a disaster. Nevertheless, it's very interesting. You know, the Poles in the early 1990s were. Um, you know, had this conviction, you know, there's, there's been a, you know, our economy is a catastrophe, it's a disaster, we need to do something very radical, we need to make big changes, and they, and they did. Whereas the Hungarians felt, well, it's not that bad, we were the sort of happiest prisoner in the socialist camp, we have done some reforms already, we don't really need to do that much, you know. And the upshot was, is that in Poland you wound up making, people made much more dramatic changes, and they wound up with a much more dynamic society and a much more dynamic and faster growing form of capitalism. Um, and Hungary is now kind of stuck in a morass. The Hungarians just didn't feel that there was a catastrophe. Um, it's very important that you feel that it's a catastrophe. It's a disaster. You need to change it fast. Sense, sense of urgency. You need a sense of urgency. I mean, I sort of felt when I was in Kiev a few months ago, I felt that this might be the case.